Wayne McKay, Professor of Law, Dalhousie University. And John LeBlanc, Associate Professor of Pediatric Psychiatry, Community Health and Epidemiology at Dalhousie University. Well, there are a lot of definitions of cyberbullying, but we start in Nova Scotia with defining bullying first. So maybe I'll just give you a quick statement of what the Nova Scotia definition is. Bullying means behavior typically repeated that is intended to cause or should be known to cause fear, intimidation, humiliation, distress, or other harm to another person's body, feeling, self-esteem, reputation, or property. And then we go on to say that cyberbullying is simply a variation of that done by electronic means. Legal aspects of cyberbullying are large and uh, way more uh, extensive than we have time for, but first of all, even in the definition, who is likely to be seen as a cyberbully? So, for example, in the, again, the Nova Scotia definition, uh, encouraging participants or bystanders are also included and uh, parents who don't properly supervise are included. So that's one variation on a legal issue. Another really important one is who can be sued if there is a case of cyberbullying and the damages that occur for that. And uh, now there's new legislation again in some various places saying that the individual student or person can be sued. In some cases, the parent can be sued, possibly the school boards for negligence. So those are possibilities. Defamation. A lot of actions on defamation if uh, cyberbullying is damaging the reputation of a person. And debates going on right now about whether or not there needs to be additional criminal provisions on cyberbullying or whether the existing criminal code provisions are adequate. So those are some of the legal ways of pursuing it. On the other side of that, defenses are privacy. How much uh, can privacy be invaded in, in pursuing this and free speech, which is even bigger in the United States but fairly big in Canada as well. The federal government has jurisdiction in criminal law, so anything relevant to criminal law would be theirs, as well as telecommunications, so internet service providers have some federal role. The province has the most significant role because they deal with education, health, uh, social welfare, uh, social uh, issues generally within the province, so they have a huge role in schools, hospitals, and elsewhere. And interestingly, municipalities also have exercised a role. Some of the western provinces has bylaws against uh, bullying and cyberbullying. So all three have different roles. The, the, the role of parents is critical and it's largely around prevention. Uh, that means at the very beginning creating a nurturing environment with open lines of communication with your skills because as we know bullying and cyberbullying um, are relationship problems and the solutions depend on healthy relationships. Secondly, it means that parents have got to become familiar with the actual electronic technology. Uh, and uh, as uh, we heard this morning, just as we wouldn't allow our children to just grab the keys of the cars and go out driving, it's analogous with uh, computers. We somehow feel that they can have their smartphone and be totally on their own. Um, and many parents are in fact afraid of the technology. Um, so I think it's very important for them to and register on, on things like Facebook and so forth and become involved in, in monitoring their children at least when they're young uh, of what they're doing. And obviously as they get older, one, one allows adolescents to have more latitude. Thirdly, they have to be, uh, that's kind of on the preventive side, the lines of communication, a nurturing environment. Uh, in terms of detecting whether it's actually occurring, it's extremely important to monitor, but not necessarily monitor the electronics because, again, you're not going to go to your 16-year-old and be snooping through uh, those posts. What you might do, though, and what you will do for sure, is look for signs of trouble uh, in, in your child or adolescent. Are they avoiding school? Are they avoiding social media that pre previously they wanted to? Are they complaining of belly aches and headaches where that was never a problem before? Are there signs of injury? or All those things that make you think something is going on and then you have to probe. So it's not necessarily to, to think that one has to monitor electronically. It's being a vigilant parent with open lines of communication with your children. If I could just add a, a legal uh, twist on that, the new Nova Scotia legislation would actually make it uh, parents liable for paying money and compensation if they don't adequately supervise their children. So that would add to the uh, points that John just made.
there's a lot of organizations that are significant, but as John indicated, schools are certainly a critical, next to parents, probably the key uh, players in all of this. And the school climate needs to be one in which people can learn. And if bullying and cyberbullying is occurring and that's negatively impacting the school climate, then that's something that schools have to do uh, something about. So organizations like schools clearly have a role to play. So. And just to, just to build on that, so that, that means it is the duty of the principal to investigate something even if it occurs off school premises as long as it's affecting school climate. But again, the role is largely preventive. It's largely building a healthy climate where bullying does not thrive or cyberbullying. Um, and it's uh, certainly intervening when it does occur, but always keeping that focus on, on prevention. There are in Ontario, for example, there's 1.3 million students between grades 4 and 12. And there's, let's say, lots of different estimates for how often cyberbullying occurs, but they range from 20 to 40 percent. Let's say it's 25 percent. That means there's 300,000 episodes of cyberbullying um, uh, or students who experience it every year. There is no way that any uh, legislation, law enforcement, school officials are going to be able to get on top of all of that. It's going to be a large part due to the efforts that we make to create healthy environments.